John. If you look around the room, you see very many different kinds of people. There are no two people the same, but we all do have at least one thing in common. This is we all need food to survive. Now whether you're the type of person who enjoys TV dinners and fast food, or you're the type of person who enjoys the finer foods in life, such as escargot, caviar, or, prosci or prosciutto. I'm gonna focus my speech today on duck prosciutto and more importantly how to make it. According to Sharon Tyler Erbst in her book, The New Food Lover's Companion, prosciutto is a term used to describe a ham, or in my case, a duck breast, that has been seasoned, salt cured, and air dried. Now you might be asking yourself, at what point do we cook the duck breast? Well, we don't. Dry curing refers to when a curing ingredient, in our case salt, and some seasonings are rubbed all over the meat, then it is buried in salt for a number of days, depending on the thickness of the meat and the weight of the meat. Salt is an essential ingredient in this dry cure method. What it does is it draws moisture from the muscle cells while entering the cells by osmosis, which in turn inhibits the function and growth of bacteria and enzymes, says Philip Hasheter in his book, The Complete Book of Butchering, Smoking, Curing, and Sausage Making. There are four simple steps to making duck prosciutto. The first step is to purchase your duck breast and your seasonings. The second step is to rub and bury your duck breast. The third step is to unbury your duck breast, rinse it, wrap it, and hang it. And the fourth step is finally to enjoy. Now the first step, purchasing your duck breast and your seasonings. Um, I uh, was fortunate enough to meet a chef named Adam Hagen when I was out purchasing my ingredients for this project. And Adam had to say to me was, try and always use organic or wild duck and purchase from local farmers markets and local purveyors. This will ensure quality and freshness. Now your seasonings are optional. Traditionally you don't season it, it's just with salt and you put a little pepper on it when you're hanging it. But when I tend to cook or do anything for that matter, I like to be different. I like to stray away from the ordinary and do things that people don't usually do. So I season my duck breast. I season it with chili flakes, whole peppercorns, bay leaves, anise seed, fennel seed, whole rosemary, truffle salt, ground thyme, onion powder, and garlic powder. <coughs> now you wanna put all these uh, seasonings in like a coffee grinder and grind it so it's a nice fine powder. Once you have your duck breast and your seasonings, it brings you to the second step which is to rub and bury your duck breast. So I've got a duck breast here. And I always try to keep one hand wet and one hand dry, that way you don't cross contaminate. So we'll take let me see that, the duck breast. And your seasonings. Just kind of rub it all over. generous about it, you get it all in cracks. So once that's rubbed, then you want to bury it in salt. You want to have about an inch of salt all around on either side of the duck breast, that way the salt can thoroughly penetrate through the duck breast and get all the moisture out. So you put a layer down first, the metal pan, then put your duck breast in. And you just bury it. Alright, you get the point. After that is done, it brings us to our third step, which is to unbury, wrap it, and hang it. So I started a duck breast um, two days ago, and that way I could show you guys what it looks like and how to wrap it. Now I already unburied it this morning and rinsed it off just for sake of the saving time during my speech. But as you can see, the duck breast is noticeably smaller, not as bright, the meat is dark and kind of hard feeling because all the moisture has been drawn out of it. Now what we want to do is wrap it. Now you want to wrap it in some cheesecloth just to keep it nice and tight and keep from bacteria and stuff trying to get to it. So you lay it down on your cheesecloth, fold it over once, and fold this end in, fold it over again. Now fold 
put that end in and just finish rolling it over nice and tight. Then to wrap it, you take some butcher's twine like you would to tie a roast and tie it. So at the bottom, you just tie a basic knot like so. Then you're going to bring it up, put your thumb here, take the twine over your thumb and under the breast, and take the end and put it through where your thumb was. Do you help make that? And then do one more. So over your thumb, around and under. And now you have it nice and tied, but you can hang it in your uh, refrigerator. One well, I don't think I mentioned, you leave your duck breast, the raw one buried in the salt, for two days. Then after this step, you hang it. You hang it in your refrigerator for at least two weeks. And then my fourth step is to unwrap and enjoy. So uh, this is one I did a couple, like a month ago. I just pulled it out of the freezer the other day. And I'll let you guys try it if you want after the speech. And see how it's a lot smaller and funny looking. So Christine Ingram states in her very informative book, the World Encyclopedia of Cooking Ingredients that duck is high in protein, contains B vitamin B, and is a good source of zinc, potassium, and magnesium, and iron. That way you don't have to feel guilty about eating it. Although duck prosciutto may sound very fancy and something you never thought of doing at your house, with these four steps that I have just shown you, to purchase your duck and seasonings, to rub your and bury your duck breast, unbury, rinse, wrap, and hang, and to finally enjoy your duck breast, you too can ma make and enjoy this delicacy whose methods of preparation have been around as early as 3000 BC.